I beg your pardon? Eight bosses. Eight? Eight, wow. So that means that when I make a mistake, I have eight different people coming by to tell me about it. That's my... Several of you said at the beginning of the term that you had not seen the movie Office Space. So I thought I'd give you a little preview. Um, it is... I don't know if it's the best movie ever made. But it's certainly one of two best movies ever made. Uh, because you can you can buy it on YouTube, apparently, for a couple bucks. I saw that. Okay. Somebody wiggle the cable that goes to the projector? I'm pretty sure that's what the problem with the uh, the color is. <coughs> raise your hand. Oh, just go ahead and raise your hand. I'm gonna have everybody raise their hand. Raise your hand if you were ever a child. <laughs> right? Most of us were a child at one point. Now raise your hand if while you were a child, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Keep your hand up if while you were a child. You ever had like dreams and goals and visions of the future, right? You thought about what your life was going to be like when you became an adult, right? Everybody's hand still up. Did, did, keep your hand up if you thought about if you thought about like like careers, like like it, it, it doesn't have to be the one that you settled on later, right? Keep your hand up though if you if you at some point when your childhood you thought about your career, like there's firefighters and policemen. I, I, for a long time, I wanted to be a helicopter pilot in the Army. Then I realized jet fighter pilot was going to be way cooler than helicopter pilot in the Army, because you could get away faster when people were shooting at you. And, uh, and, then, and then, actually, I got, uh, I got glasses when I was in Air Force ROTC. And they took away my pilot slot, told me I was going to be a missile officer. So I immediately transferred my thinking that I'm going to be a naval officer, because they still don't let me drive a boat with glasses, right? And I met a girl. In fact, a lot of these visions that I remember from growing up, especially around the high school time, can you put your hands down? Uh, a lot of these visions that I remember, especially around the high school time, involved girls. Right now, I went to, I graduated from high school 30 years ago this year. Right? And so that's about all I can remember from high school, right, is the, the pretty girls. Now, in college, I remember a little bit more about this, but one of the things that, that came to me when I was in college was that I was going to own a manufacturing company. I don't know why. I knew, and I remember, like, I, I could very clearly visualize it in my mind. I could actually remember the moment of having this vision so clearly the first time. I was, I was, I was in Sweden. I was there as an exchange student. I was writing in my journal, because for some reason about that time in my life I started journaling. And, and the journal was this like pinkish, purplish, three ring, or not three ring, spiral bound thing that I got at like the, uh, the bookstore at the school I went to. And I'm writing in there, I, I remember vi envisioning walking through the factory. And I remember walking through the factory and observing everybody that was at the machine working. Now, the, the factory was a little amorphous to me. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you what they were making in the factory. I just remember it was a factory. There's people at machines. There was machinery. There was products going out the door. And I was leaving to go play golf. And, and so I knew at that moment that I had to own a manufacturing company because I could still be making money when other people were working and I was playing golf. Now, at that point in my life, I had never played golf. In fact, I've probably played golf eight times since then. I love golf, but I'm not very good at it. And it's not really one of my things, but I just remember that, that moment of walking through. Now, go back to our childhood. What, what did you think you were going to be when you grew up? Have you gotten there? Or are you in the process of going there? Because no. I didn't own a manufacturing company until about five years ago. So it took me a long time to get to the point where I actually owned that manufacturing company. Um, you're on your way there. Um, anybody have a, a dream about a car? Like, like, I had to have this car. All the guys' hands are going to go up right Put your hands up. Right, all the guys' hands are going to go up. I want to see how many of the, how many of the women had a dream car, too. 
Right, that's your right. What was your read card? In the back. <laughs> when, when I was a kid, Tesla was this old guy that invented electricity. <laughs> what was your green car? Aston Martin DB9. Aston Martin DB9. Now, that's actually one of my recent green cars. It was not my green car when I was a kid. What do you got? Subaru Impreza WRX SDI. A Subaru Impreza WRX SDI? STI. STI. See, his dreams got, his dreams got legs. Your Aston Martin may cost five times as much as his Subaru. But his dream's got legs because he knows the details of his dream. Now for me, the bright red, 308 GTS Ferrari. Legs to one back. And that was the car I had to have. Now as I, got, as I got older, I wanted a 68 Camaro. And then I wanted a 69 XKE Jag. Um, where did I go? Oh, from there, it was totally the SL Mercedes. And I was on that SL Mercedes for a long time. In fact, I'm not sure I really moved off of it. But, um, all right, so why are we here today? We're here because we want to fulfill our dreams, right? You guys want, you want that WRX, right? And you want that Tesla. I tried to buy a Tesla for my wife last year. I was gonna get her Model 3. I was gonna put it in the deposit way back when you had to put it in the deposits. And she said she wanted a Corolla. Hey, I saved a hundred thousand dollars for a Corolla. <laughs> All right, so um, why are we here today? We're here to try to get us closer to our dreams, right? We're here to get us to fulfill our dreams. And so my dream was own a manufacturing company. And when it came time for me to own a manufacturing company, I had a lot of thinking to do about this, right? And so what I want to do today is, is I want to go through the, so the today's topic is manufacturing economics, right? One other quick story. Who's ever fall asleep in a classroom? What? Like fall asleep in a classroom. Like like I don't mean like 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 nodding off. I mean like fall asleep. Hands up, be proud. So I used to think economics was interesting. In fact, I used to think economics was pretty boring. In that big lecture hall that's on the other side of this building over there, what's the class number or the room number? The big one that's right over there. We can see it through the windows. 216. 216? Yeah, AK 216. I had Macro macroeconomics in that room because I had to take a social science class to graduate, right? You guys, do you guys have to take a social science class to graduate? Two. two. two? Yeah, I don't know what my other one was. Maybe I took microeconomics too. Those are like the two that people take, right? Macroeconomics, microeconomics. It's definitely macroeconomics. In that classroom, Elsie woke up in the middle of a double E class. Everybody in my class left me sleeping on the desk. Everybody in the other class came in and sat down around me. Yeah. So I hope that I don't bore you with our discussion of economics today. I'm going to try to be a little bit more, what's the word? Awakening than he was. Uh, when I was actually, it was a great class and I should have stayed awake for more of it. Uh, economics is about money, right? And money is how we buy stuff, and buying stuff is fun. So let's talk about what goes into creating a manufacturing company. All right, it worked. Do we need more light on the thing? We'll find out. What goes into creating a manufacturing company? What do you have to have if you have a manufacturing company? Start listing the stuff for me. It's a place to work in. We need a location. You know, location is going to have costs associated. All these, and, and this is very similar. Remember, when we did the lean manufacturing thing. We talked about lean manufacturing at the beginning of the term. We talked about one of the costs of manufacturing. So let's look at the high level stuff. Let's look at the high level stuff. What's it? What's it? Ooh, light switch over there too, though. Oh, look at that! I didn't know you could control it from there. Sort of. Sure. So all right. So we need a location. What else do we need to have? And let's let's. Let's focus on a sort of job shop style machine shop, similar to what we're doing here. So a place that makes prototypes, it makes short production run parts, it with CNC machining, right? Because that's what we've been talking about all term. That's what we're focused on. And that's what I know something about, so better to focus on that. What else? We need a location. Yeah. Employees. We need some employees.
That would start up, we could say that we're going to be the first employee, but we certainly want to grow that past that. You need customers. You need customers. I have done something in this class. What else do we need? Yeah. A plan. A plan. This is part of it. What else do we need? Resources. Like what? I, I don't disagree, I just want to be more specific. Stock, make whatever you're making, I guess. So in order to make the stock, we're going to have to have a source for raw materials. Yes. So right, because if we decide to build our manufacturing facility in the middle of Antarctica, Unless the aliens who live underneath us are going to help us out, it's going to be hard to get the supplies that we need in order to do manufacturing in a timely manner. Okay, so what else do we need? Yeah. Machine tools. We're going to need some sort of equipment. What else? We need more than this. So we got our machine tools. What do we need to go with? Yeah. Uh, marketing. Or so software. marketing might be our plan for getting customers. Yep, fair. Right. What do we need? Yes. Electricity. We need to set up utilities. And so, and so let's say electricity, phone, internet, we need gas service, and we need gas to operate our facility. So all those things, we need to set those things up. What else do we need? We're missing a couple key items here. Yeah. Somebody? We got machine tools. So the machine tools are not very effective without the machines themselves. Well, the machine tools are the machines in my mind. So what I'm saying is the tooling, right? So the tooling. So we don't have to have all of the tooling at once, right? But we certainly have to have the source of the tooling and the ability to buy it when we need it. So we need the machine tools, we need the tooling, what else do we need? So how do we prepare the stock material before we bring it to the milling machine? Yeah. Uh, we might need a saw to cut stuff. You might need a saw. So, so with, with machine tools, I'm thinking of the CNC machines, right? But I'm going to need a band saw, I'm going to need a chop saw, I'm going to need a hack saw, I'm going to need some way to cut that material up. or. I can order it in the already cut up condition. But I gotta, I gotta have a plan for how I'm gonna handle that stuff. And I gotta have hand tools. Because not all the operations happen in the CNC machine, right? I've gotta have metrology tools. tools. What else do I have to have? Anything else? This is a good start, right? What do we think this stuff's going to cost? Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Yeah, so let's, let's, let's just throw some numbers at it. And so we can... I guess the easiest way to, to sort of visualize this might be in sort of how much does it cost per month? 
right? So things like our location, we're, pro we're probably, unless we have a big piece of land already that we already possess, that has a big building on it that we already possess and we've already paid for, we're probably going to lease the location, right? So we're going to rent this. And so, oh, how many, how many machine tools do we want? Because that's going to determine how big the space needs to be. So what do you guys take from machine tools? What should we get? We're gonna start. A, we're gonna start a job shop. Oh, Uncle Toby's got all the capital you need. He's gonna fund it for you. How many machines do you want to buy? Oh, we just start now. We can grow later. How many machines do we want to buy? One, two, twenty, fifty. How many do you want? You want five? So like three mills, two lanes, something like that. Five of each, so we want 10 machine tools. Okay, so 10 spindles to lay that out with some, and we gotta have computers and, and software, right? <coughs> we have a little bit of office space. So maybe we'll do a thousand square foot office, and maybe we'll do 5,000 square feet for the machine shop. So that's 6,000 square feet, a dollar per foot per year, so it's gonna be Six thousand dollars a month is going to be our rent. And if you want six thousand square feet, I will rent it to you today for six thousand dollars a month, just across the street. So six thousand dollars a month for the space. How many employees do you want? You have ten machine tools. I'd say one reasonably competent machine tool operator slash technician can probably keep three spindles running at once. We've got 10 spindles, so by rights we should probably have three people, right? How much person cost? Right, three goes into 10, three times, ish. So, because, I mean, is that, it, do you want employees on top of yourself or are you going to be one of the employees? Somebody decide. If you're going to be on top of you have to be able to decide quickly. You're one of the employees. I'm going to be one of the employees. So I'm going to hire two guys. Yeah. Plus me. <coughs> well, I'm going to hire two ladies. Plus me. <coughs> Actually, I would hire the ladies. They tend to be more detail focused and detail oriented. They're probably going to make better parts of your customers. Just as an aside. Not that I discriminate against men when I'm hiring. That would be against the law. Um, uh, Margaret, all right, so we got an employee, so what's an employee cost? Yeah, 60,000 a year. You want to pay them 60,000 a year in salary? Okay, so then they cost 120,000 a year. The company, when you estimate how much an employee costs, whatever salary you plan to pay them, you just double that. Because there's benefits, there's taxes, there's all kinds of stuff that you have to pay. There's um, unemployment insurance that you have to pay, there's liability insurance that you have to pay goes up when you have uh, employees. So the, the rule of thumb is you double it. And so, so 120, which is how much a month? 10,000 a month? So 20 per month for our employees. You gotta pay yourself? You're thinking maybe not now, huh? You just spent $20,000 a month for employees. Oh, wait, you need to pay yourself more than that? Less than that. So we need to yourself like 15,000 a month instead of 10? We're just starting out. You're not driving that Ferrari today. I'm not even sure you're driving the Subaru yet, unless it's used. What are you thinking? How much are you going to pay yourself? Somebody, somebody decide. You're going to pay yourself zero? Do you think you're profit at the end? How are you going to feed your kids? You have a job. Okay. That's how I did it. That's fair. I, I don't take a salary from my company. Because I get a salary from WPI to feed my kids. So, okay, that's fair. So let's give 20,000. Um, so customers marketing, how much are you gonna spend on marketing? Customer acquisition. It's a thing. Oh, let's just let's make up a number, 1,000 bucks a month. Um, plan is free, you just did that in your head, right? No 
bit painy for your head. Uh, raw material sources, uh, let's, let's look at this as cost of, cost of sales. We don't actually have any raw material expense until we've sold something to a customer. So let's separate this one. <coughs> C-O-F. <coughs> now, machine tools. We're going to get machine tools. 10 machine tools, right? Um, so if it was six, like we have three mills and three lathes in um, the manufacturing labs over here, right? We have three mini mills, the three lathes over there. Last time I got a quote for leasing that equipment, if we did a five-year lease, and oh, by the way, we have a five-year lease up here. We're committed to, what is that? What did I say it was? 60,000, no, $1,000 a month times 12 months, or $6,000 a month times 12 months, how much do we have? 6 times 12? 72,000. 32? 72. 72, 72 cents more like it, yeah. $72,000 times five. So we, when we sign this lease, we get it to basically three hundred something thousand. Just don't forget that. Uh, machine tools. So to lease those machine tools, uh, six of them was going to be about eighty thousand dollars a year. To ten of them, uh, let's, let's call it let's call it an even hundred. Let's call it ten thousand dollars a month, an even hundred twenty a year. dollars a month. Plant didn't cost us anything. So our utilities, let's go a thousand bucks a month. Uh, our computers, <coughs> three employees, we probably need one, two computers. Right? We need one really good computer. So that's going to be like a one-time expense of, well, three grand. Do you guys want SolidWorks? Do you guys want a spree? Do you guys know how much a spree costs? $35,000 a seat. Let's go with the Autodesk thing that's free for startups. Okay? So we're going to say the software costs nothing. We use the Autodesk 360, it's free for startups. Uh, but our computer, we need like three grand, one time expense for the computer. Um, software, we're going to say that's nothing for now. The cost of capital, so if we borrow the money to get all this stuff, then there's going to be interest. On here, we can call that the cost of capital. Uh, but let's ignore that for right now. Uh, tooling. The tooling is a sort of a cost of sales, right? The tooling wears out over time. So we can sort of group that as cost of sales. It's just hard to keep track of. But let's call that COS for now. So three guys, machine shop, 6,000 square feet. All the little hand tools that go along with that, the screwdrivers and the wrenches and the micrometers and, and so we'll, we'll put the metrology tools in there. The micrometers, we will not have fancy metrology tools. Uh, what do you think that costs for a shop that size? Just to buy it all at once. Any guesses? Yeah. Several hundred thousand dollars? About a hundred grand to set up a shop for three people. If, if you go out, and, and that's if you, you know, you go to eBay and you buy used machinist tools and stuff like that. So we'll spend about 100 grand on that. If we divide that by five years, how much is it? 10,000 a year? All right. But we had to come up with that up front. So let's call it 100 grand divided by five is 20, right? Yep. 20. Normally I take dictation when I'm up here, but something said wrong with math for me. I had to ask. All right, so what's, oh, that's 20,000 a year divided by 12. What's that divided by 12? Roughly 2,000, we'll call it 2,000. All right, so our monthly cost, 3,000, 13,000, 14,000, 34,000, 40,000. So I got $40,000 a month. Start up my machine shop before I've sold anybody any parts. 
$40,000 a month before I sold anybody any farms. Woo! That's exciting. Huh? First check's fun to write, let me tell you. Second one's still pretty fun to write. When I, when I, when I started my company, we didn't, we didn't do it this way. We created a company and then we bought an existing company. So, so we jump started the process. When I started my company, I was very proud of myself. I printed up these nice glossy business cards. Chief executive officer, and the font was totally too big on the CEO, right? Totally too big. I was like way too proud of that job title. But six months into that, I said, my job title should be he writes checks. Because that's what I did for six months. I wrote checks. It took us six months to get a paying customer when we bought a customer list when we bought the company. Now, we had open orders when we bought the company, so we had some revenue during those six months. I didn't land a new job for six months. I wrote a lot of checks, though. My wife said that her job title was going to make sure they're clear. Because I was just writing checks. I wasn't checking the bank account. That's her job. So $40,000 a month to get started. How many hours a day are we going to run? Yeah. Ten. You want to run 10 hours a day? One shift, 10 hours a day? Maybe. I mean, there's, there's 24 hours in a day. Those machine tools do not care if they run 24 hours a day. And we operate often 24 hours a day, seven days a week in our facility, lights out, because we've automated processes so that they can run lights out. How many, how many hours a day do we want to run? You can't do 24 hours a day, seven days a week for extended periods of time because there's no maintenance time in there. Stuff breaks down, we have to stop the production. But for a short spurt, you can do it. So what do you want to do? It's a startup. I'm going to run two shifts. All right, I'm going to give you guys some advice as your mentor in your startup venture here. We're going to run two shifts. Your guys are going to run first shift. And you're going to be in and out during first shift. And then you are going to run second shift. And you're going to see how many of those 10 spindles you can keep running for the second shift. Assuming your 1000 bucks a month on customer acquisition and marketing is sufficient to fill up those spindles. So let's, just, let's just make that assumption because you have to be. You have to be excited at the beginning. You have to believe it's going to work at the beginning. Otherwise, you might as well sit, sit at home and watch video games. Like, and I don't mean play video games. I mean watch them. All right, so $40,000 a month. We're going to operate two shifts, eight hours a day, 16 hours a day, call it five days a week. That gives us weekend time to make up before we behind schedule, stuff like that. So how many hours is that? Man hours. We have two guys, 40 hours a week. So we have two guys, 40 hours a week, and we got ourselves for 60 hours a week, 80 hours a week, let's call it. So that's 40 and 40 is 80, plus our 80 is what? I know, I know what 80 and 80 is, it's 160, right? So 160 hours a week we're going to operate. That's cool. There's eight hours left for maintenance. 160 hours. Oh yeah, 160 hours a week. <coughs> How many weeks in a month? Four. How many? Four times 160 is what? 640. So if we get 640 hours. It's 640,000 hours, right? Is it 600, not 640 hours? How many hours? 640 hours, sorry. You're right. <laughs> I was thinking of a bigger operation. There's more people. 640 hours? Is that right? Doesn't seem right. Oh, in a month. In a month, right. We just stepped off the week. Okay, $40,000 a month. So if I want dollars per hour, how many dollars per hour do I need to charge for that time? What's 40 divided by 640? 62.5. 62.5. 
dollars per hour. What did we just figure out? So now we know something. Now we have a hard data point. We have not figured out profit rate. Profit rate is zero at this point. All we did was break even. We have now paid our $40,000 $40, this month. If I sold all those hours at $62 an hour, I figured out my minimum acceptable profit rate. I have to, or at least in order to break even with my investment here, I have to sell 640 hours of machining at $62.50 an hour in order to break even with my machine shop. So I'm not paying myself, right? There's a funny thing on, on my, I've seen it in several places. The definition of entrepreneur is someone who quits a 40 hour a week job to work for free at an 80 hour a week job. Um, we broke it even at $62 an hour. How much do we want to charge for our time? When we're selling our time. Do you think we're going to sell all 640 hours? Is there any chance that we're going to sell all 640 hours with our $1,000 a month marketing budget? A lot of your 80 hours is going to be going to visit customers and potential customers to try to get the sales in. The owner is the most important salesperson at the company. Right? So $62 an hour is not the right number. What should our, what should our shop charge rate be? We need to decide. We actually, this is this is one of the things we get to decide. Now our customers get to decide whether or not they're gonna pay us. Eighty dollars an hour. So you like eighty? Eighty dollars an hour. Two fifty. Whew. <laughs> I like two fifty. Let me tell you, unless you are really fast at making parts, ain't nobody paying two fifty. Average shop rates in this area right now range between 60 and 120. <coughs> so if you have a great reputation of providing high quality, on time service all the time, <laughs> you could probably charge up to $100 an hour for your shop rate. If you're just starting out and you have no reputation, you can probably charge 60. Now what would I do first? I try to make this number go down a little bit, right? And so that, that's actually how we made that number go down. We didn't, we didn't buy all this stuff. We bought an existing company for a fixed monthly price. Uh, and so it was an owner finance. I didn't have to bring any cash. They sold me the company with the understanding that I would pay them over time with the profits the company made. So you can get this number way down um, if you're able to, to do something like that. But here's our, here's the thing. So minimum we have to charge $62 an hour just to break even for the company. Now, we are no longer the entrepreneur with our startup manufacturing company. Now, we are the employee at startup manufacturing company. The entrepreneur has decided, I like 80. 80 is a good number. Who said 80? Over here? I like 80. Let's go with 80 unless we give people quotes and they don't buy because of price. And then we're going to have to get that to come down. And if, if they always buy, let's bump it to 85.90, right? As we, as we run our business, we can decide what that rate is, right? We pick the shop rate. We've calculated here what our minimum has to be to stay in business if we can sell all that time. Um, I would, I would say for this startup, they have to get 120, because there's no way they're gonna sell half the time they have available at the beginning. So they either have to be able to accept that loss and keep running checks, or they've gotta be able to somehow get 120 at their time. But um, with our, our next group assignment, the last group assignment we do in the class, 
what you guys are going to do is you're going to go through the process of designing the manufacturing steps to make the Sterling engines that we make in an 1800. As if you were selling them to a customer who wants to order them. And one of the things you're going to have to do is you're going to have to decide things like how many machine tools do I need in order to make the parts fast enough to break even. In order to do this estimate, you've got to have a shop rate. And so you can pick 80, 60, 120 as your shop rate. You have to justify why you chose that shop rate. In these but what goes in, all right, so we understand now what, what, what it takes to operate the manufacturing facility. And so it's cost us that $40,000 a month without even selling a part yet. When we want to start selling parts, how do we cost the parts for our customers? Because our customer, one, our customer uploads the part to our website. Our customer emails us a part. Our customer comes in and hands us a napkin that they drew a sketch on. At the moment that they give you the information about wanting a quote, what they actually want to have in their hand is the part. They actually don't care about the quote. The quote is just a step for them to get to the part. Right, because if they decided they want to buy the part, they want to have the part. Not the quote. What goes into creating, what goes into the cost of giving the part to the people now that we know our shop rate? We're going to spend more time on this. Oh, you know, I decided to adjust the schedule, I think. We didn't have a class schedule for Wednesday this week on the syllabus. But we have two days off next week for weird reasons, right? We have academic advising day next week, and we have um, reading day. Who are you guys going to read about on reading day, by the way? I hope you read about manufacturing on reading day. I really hope you do. Um, but I think we missed two classes next week because of that. So uh, let's do three classes this week. Tomorrow we're going to con- What's that? We missed one. Yeah, What's that? Just, we just missed Friday, don't we? No, it's Thursday. Thursday, too. No, my other class has class on Friday. Sorry, but um, but I don't I don't normally lecture on Wednesdays at the end of the term. That's what it is. Um, but let's do. Uh, you want to do Wednesday this week or Wednesday next week then? Next, next week. week. This week. Which one? This week. We're gonna do Wednesday this week because my kids don't have school next week, so I don't want to do Wednesday next week either. Um, all right, so we're going to do Wednesday this week, so we're going to do today, tomorrow, and Thursday. Tomorrow we're going to talk about manufacturing economics again. On Thursday, I'm going to finish the stuff we didn't finish up on metrology and uh, quality last week. Okay, so tomorrow we're going to go right into this discussion of manufacturing economics. We're going to go into exactly what it costs to make a part so that we can provide a quote to our customer so that our customer maybe buys a part and we maybe make our 6250, and we maybe don't go out of business that first six months of our new manufacturing company. This is exciting. Who wants to go start a manufacturing company now? You do? You gonna do it this way? I don't recommend it. Go buy a company. There's like 30,000 of them for sale right now. Who wants to know how much it costs to make a part? Who thinks they might ever buy a part from a manufacturing company? Really? You guys should stay home then. I think you will. If you're, if you're going to be an engineer and you're going to go do design work, who thinks they're going to do design work as an engineer? Why are you designing this stuff? So that people can have it, right? Well, if you're going to make sure that it works, you're going to get a prototype. So either you're going to make it yourself or you're going to buy one from somebody else. So I think you will. And oh, by the way, you're going to do it a lot right after you graduate from college. Because it's always the young engineers that get stuck with those crappy jobs. The old engineers get to make big decisions. The young engineers get to figure out how much the prototype costs. All right, so tomorrow we're going to continue this discussion. We're going to talk about quoting parts. Your, uh, your group assignment, I'll also give you the details of that tomorrow. But basically, it's going to be figuring out how much it costs to make one of those early engines, how much you can sell them for. Uh, so.